Hi and welcome to the first part of our SlideLizard tutorials. In these videos, you'll learn how to use all features of SlideLizard to their full potential. But let's just start right away. This first video is all about connecting your presentation to SlideLizard. In other words, you'll create the foundation for giving a perfect presentation. We'll start by opening an existing presentation. I already opened mine. And in our case, it's one about marine biology. Now we want to link it to SlideLizard. To do so, you obviously need to download SlideLizard first. If you haven't done so already, please follow the link in the description box. Then come back to this tutorial once the installation process is done. So once you get SlideLizard installed, it will appear in the tab bar in PowerPoint right here. Click on the tab and then link to SlideLizard. So first, you're going to enter some general information about your presentation. Give it a title, as I did, and a description. And if you want to, you could also switch the image right here. By default, it's the first slide. And very often that's totally fine, just like with my presentation. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Underneath the description right here, there is this button that you can either switch off or on. If it's switched on like this, your attendees will be able to take private notes and mark their favorite slides. They will receive their notes and favorite slides via email after the presentation is done. So this tool is actually very helpful, but if you do not want that, you can just switch it off as well. And if you have sensitive information on your slides, we definitely recommend setting a password right here. Your attendees will have to enter that password in order to get to your slides. In the next step, choose whether you want to share your slides with the audience or not. If you do want to share them, you have four options. The first one is to only let them see the current slide. The second one is to let your attendees see all the slides up until the current slide, but nothing after. The third option is to let them see all the slides from the beginning. And the fourth is to not show them the slides at all until the presentation has finished. I'm going to go with the all slides from the beginning option for my presentation. Do you want your audience to be able to download the slides as PDF? If so, be sure to check this, this check mark box here. You can again choose um, if the PDF download should be available before the presentation from the beginning on or after the presentation. So I'm going to stick with from the beginning. Also, you can request that your audience needs to enter their email address in order to get access to your slides. So I'm going to choose that option. So next, you can share additional content and links with your audience. SlideLizard automatically searches through your slides and adds all links it can find. You can also click on Auto Discover right here to trigger SlideLizard to search your presentation for links. And you know, that's why I already got those two links here because it automatically added it in. But of course, you can also add new links manually simply by clicking add link and then copying whichever link you want. I got that YouTube video here. Click paste. And then slide lizard automatically creates a title and a type. It's like magic, I know. Um, and it usually recognize it, it recognizes it automatically what it is and that the perfect title. But if you want, you can of course change it as well. Give it a description. And for all of these additional contents, you can also choose if it's supposed to be available before the presentation, from the beginning or after the presentation. Plus you can make it accessible to for everybody or for only those who gave you the email address. You can also add files from your computer. It works the same way. Just click add file and then select whichever file you want from your computer. And you can also give it a title, a type, a description. It's basically the same. 
Plus, with Slide Lizard, it is even possible to share a live stream with your audience. Just click Add Link and then choose Type Live Stream. And this is where the link to your live stream goes. Could be a YouTube live stream or a Facebook live stream, whichever you have. So then your attendees will be able to see both the slides and your live stream. But if you want any details on how to use the live stream exactly, I'm going to link another video in the info box below. Anyway, that's a pretty cool feature. If you want to conduct polls or quizzes during your presentation, you can create them here. You can either create a completely new poll or select one from our various presets. So let's start by creating a poll first and afterwards we'll do a quiz question, right? At the beginning of my presentation, I'd like to know how well my audience is informed about the topic. So just enter the question and then choose single choice. If you only want your audience to choose one option or multiple choice, if you want your attendees to be able to choose more than one option. In this case, I think that single choice makes more sense. This is where you can set a countdown for your poll. You can choose when the poll is going to open. Let's say five seconds after the poll slide is shown. And let's give the audience about 30 seconds to answer. So the poll should close 35 seconds after the poll slide is shown. Simple math. <laughs> if you want, you can also customize the chart type and set the answer image to large, but I'm going to leave it as it is. And now's the time where you can add various answers. If you click the little plus right here, you can also add a new answer. And right here, you can add representative pictures or emojis to the answers. Here you can switch around the answers or if you feel like deleting one again, just click here. Right, so that's it for the poll question. Now let's go ahead to the quiz, quiz question. Let's just create a new one. The process is actually nearly the same and the only difference is that you have one or more correct answers compared to the poll questions where you don't really have a right or wrong answer. Now type in your question. And then make sure you choose single choice quiz or multiple choice quiz. Be sure not to confuse it with single choice or multiple choice. Make sure the quiz is behind because otherwise you won't be able to choose a right answer. So multiple choice is again if you want your attendees to choose more than one option and single choice if there is only one correct answer and you only want them to choose one answer, obviously. Again, the countdown, the chart type, the answer image, that's all more or less the same, or actually more the same, it's basically the exact same. You can again type in the answers, as with this question, it's quite easy. And add an emoji again. Rearrange or delete answers. And then again, with this little check mark, you have to check it for the correct answer. You can obviously also choose more than one as correct, but for this question, it doesn't make sense. It's just, if you have more than one correct answer, you can choose, of course, more than one correct. Right here is the duplicate tool, which is pretty great 
because you can just duplicate one question that you already created if you want to ask something similar like if you want to ask are sharks mammals you could just do that in a heartbeat and also if you're more spontaneous and you don't quite know what you want to ask yet that's not a problem because you can always create more questions while you're giving the presentation um, but that will be the topic of the next tutorial part so be sure to check that out as well let's go on in the final step you can choose if you want to share your contact information with your participants or not if you click edit you can add information like your occupation and your email address so your audience can contact you afterwards. The great thing is that everything you enter here will be saved for future presentations. So you only have to enter the information once and then it will be saved. So now we're basically done. Click next and then create. And then our presentation will be linked. So now when you're in the slide lizard tab, you can see all these cool features up here. By clicking here, one of those buttons, you can always edit the information that we just entered. Here you can edit some general presentation info, shared slides, whether you want to share them, how you want to share them, shared content too, um, polls and quizzes. You can also add and remove and of course edit those and you can also edit your business card so nothing we did was final and you could always come back and change it afterwards and there's also one more quick feature so as you can see slide had created an intro slide for you here and here which shows the participation link for your audience and a qr code so people can connect even faster with your presentation Make sure that your audience sees this slide at the beginning of the presentation. If you want to add another intro slide, you can always do so by clicking here. I only need one though, especially at the beginning. So I'm gonna remove that one again. And while we're on the topic of inserting slides, you can also insert a poll slide so that your poll or quiz starts automatically. To do so, just go to the slide after which you'd like your quiz or poll to be let's say this one, and then click insert poll slide. As you can see, two slides are added in. Go to the first one, and you can see in the drop down menu here under action, it's now conduct poll, which is what we need. And under poll, you're gonna select the one that you wanna ask. So this is the beginning of my presentation, right? So I wanna ask how well are you informed about the topic? And as you can see, it Im immediately switches to the right question. Then go to the next slide and you can see this preview, but it's still the wrong question. So under action, there will be show po poll result, which is what we need. And under poll, we're gonna choose how well are you informed about the topic because it's what we previously asked. And it's gonna change as well. And we got the preview and of course, in the real presentation, these will be the real results and not just this preview. One other great thing is that if you got Slide Lizard Pro, you can even change the design of your poll slides. For example, the background, the colors or the fonts. So if you want to adapt it to your own presentation in your own style and have your own background, you can do that with the Pro version. And one last thing, not only poll slides can be triggers for poll or quiz questions. Actually, any slide can. In the drop down menu right here, you can set for each slide whether the action is non, conduct poll, or show, show poll result. So let's say we want this slide here or this slide here to be a question slide. So under action, we're gonna choose conduct poll. We're gonna choose the poll we want. Let's ask our dolphins mammals. And then the, the poll will automatically start. So now you're an expert on creating presentations with Slide Lizard and it is time to learn the next thing. And that is giving a presentation with Slide Lizard. 
In the next part of the tutorial, which is linked in the info box down below, and it will also be linked somewhere on the screen right now, you'll learn all about the slide list at percenter view, how you can make up polls and answer live questions from your audience as you present, and much, much more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.